Hello everyone, and welcome to my ninth tutorial on how to create full stack web applications. In this tutorial, I'm going to be focusing on the usage of UI Router, which is a third party module included for us by NG Boilerplate, which assists us in the creation of complex user interfaces. Now, I'm going to review the code that NG Boilerplate has created for us, as it already uses UI Router and it will be useful to review this to see how it works exactly. So you can see in our index.html file in the source directory, this is the uncompiled JavaScript file, and you can see that because uh, we have a list of scripts that Grunt is going to include that will be uh, the different dependencies in our application in the final index.html file. Now if you scroll to the top, you'll see that we have an ng app directive, uh, and ng-app is a AngularJS directive which declares a root module to bootstrap your application. So this is basically a module that will configure uh, or, or ask the different modules in your application to configure themselves so that they, they can be properly initialized in your application. So if you take a look at the app.js file which defines the root module, you can see it includes a number of different modules, including uh, two custom modules that ng Boilerplate has generated for us, the home and about modules. So uh, these two modules are uh, effectively uh, configured and they configure their own states. So uh, UI Router uses something called states. So a state can be a home page, an about page, it can be a form, it can be a gadget. Basically, a state is a way of representing a part of a web page and that, that you can navigate to. So I'm going to uh, show you guys how it's configuring its states here in a second. Uh, what I'd like to show you guys first is in the index.html file, there's a special directive used uh, that UI router has defined for us called the UI view directive. So the UI view directive is a directive that specifies a place in your file that you'd like to replace with um, a custom generated view. So we're specifying uh, so the UI view directive here effectively uh, says that this div contains the main view. So this is a custom name here. We could name this anything we want, but basically it's important that our states say whether or not they'd like to replace this particular view. So if we open up the about.js module, which defines the about state, uh, you can see uh, we use the uh, we we start. Uh, off uh, declaring the module with the name and specifying the various dependencies. And then we call the config function, which will be called uh, during, we define the config function, which will be called during the bootstrap process to help configure our about module. So during configuration, uh, this function is called, and before it's called, it's injected with a number of custom services we can define in the parameter list. Now, one of the services that we're injecting is the state provider uh, that is a custom service, uh, which is a, um, sorry, it's a service uh, defined by, um, by, it's a service defined by UI router that allows us to create uh, different states. So um, it's kind of like an upgraded route provider. You could think of it that way. So uh, basically, we use the state provider to create a state using the state command. In the first parameter, we specify the state, the name of the state. And in the second parameter, we specify a JSON object that uh, basically defines the different attributes of the state. So for example, uh, we say that this state has a URL of about. That means if we go to the state, the address bar will change accordingly. And also if you change the address bar, it will change to the state. Uh, just to illustrate that, I'm going to go to our application here. I'm going to go to slash about. And you can see the content of the page is updated with a template. So what's going on is the is UI router sees that we're tra we're, we're moving to the about state, and it sees that this state replaces the main view in our index.html file. And so it uses the about controller to um, assist in the creation of the rendered view, and also uses the partial of about tpl.html. So uh, this is how UI router works and you can also specify custom data. Custom data is being used by ng boilerplate to update the page title in our application and um, that's a more, more of an advanced feature. It's using an event handler, uh, a special event handler defined in UI router to update the title in our application. Uh, and you can see that in the app.js file. I double click the app.js file. You can see 
in the controller definition, uh, we set up an event uh, handler, which uh, basically changes the page title conditionally based on a successful state change, and changes the page title to the custom da data specified in the state we're transitioning to. And so uh, this is um, one of the more advanced features in um, UI router is uh, states. And um, bas basically, um, it's I think it's fairly self-explanatory, but um, basically this is using data binding. And if you're not familiar with data binding, this might not make a lot of sense, uh, understandably. But um, we're going to be using data binding in this tutorial um, when we uh, create our forms, and you'll see, get, get a basic understanding of how it works. And uh, this should make a lot more sense afterwards. So uh, basically, we're going to create a custom uh, module here, which will create a which will uh, n uh, basically define a registration pay screen and also a login screen for our application. So um, before I do that, uh, I'm just going to um, show you guys some uh, uh, a kind of a catch twenty two about um, uh, grunt, uh, the grunt watch task in uh, ng boilerplate. Now um, this could be because the way I set that up in uh, the project it might not be ng boilerplate's fault, but it's not detecting new directories, and uh, so basically it's basically detecting new files inside the directories. But when you create a new directory uh, in the app directory, it's not going to necessarily uh, um, notice. So if I create, for example, a new file in the about directory, and I call it test.js, you can see in the console that it notices there there was an added file. But on the other hand, if I create a new directory in the app directory called test, it's not going to notice that a directory has added. And furthermore, if I create a file and add it to the test directory and call it test.js, it's not, or, or I call it, uh, just to illustrate, I'm just going to create a file called test.js here. And you can see it doesn't detect it. So that's the point I want to make. And uh, basically, um, if you create a new directory, um, restart your uh, grunt watch task. So I'm going to. Um, cancel my grunt watch task, I'm going to create a new directory here, and then it should be able to detect the uh, changes. So I'm going to create the account directory, which will be the account module, and now I'm going to run grunt watch. So um, now it should detect uh, new files in that directory. Um, so I'm going to create the module now for our, account, uh, for our login and registration form, but before I do that, I'm going to include a couple snippets which are the, which is the um, a login and registration form, which are just basically some template files. Um, they don't define any behavior. They're just some standard HTML, and uh, we're using some Bootstrap classes here. So I'm just going to copy these template files and place them in our account directory over here. Now, uh, now that I've copied those over, I'm going to create our account.js file, which will uh, be the definition for our account module, and I'm going to call the angular.module function. And I'm going to specify a name of ng boilerplate dot account. So I'm just going to need to use our naming convention here, and I'm going to specify a dependency of UI router, and I'm just going to make sure that this is being included properly uh, in our uh, app.js file, and this will make sure it's bootstrapped properly. And uh, so I'm going to include ng boilerplate dot account here, and if we don't hear any beeps, we should be good. Um, now I'm just going to add a syntax error here, just just to see that we're getting we're getting uh, verification that it's working properly. If we don't hear any beeps, you may want to restart ng boilerplate because it means it might not be detecting changes. So I'm going to restart this. So now it is detecting a change. So I'm, it's um, going to want the code to be in pristine condition before it continues watching. So now I'm going to start it again here. Okay, so now it's watching, and if I add an error, it should beep. So now it's beeping. Okay, and I don't have to restart it. So it's just going to say that there's an error there. Okay, so now I'm being notified if there's errors in my code. So I'm going to go ahead and create a uh, config function here, and this is a function that will be called when it's bootstrap when the application is bootstrapped, and I can inject custom services into this function. So I'm going to inject the state provider service, which is a service defined by the UI router module. And I'm going to use this to create a new state. So I'm going to call it list state, uh, the login state. 
and I'm going to specify a JSON object defining that state. So I'm going to specify an attribute of URL, which will specify the URL associated with the state. And also, I'm going to specify a views uh, um, JSON object containing the, um, the, the, different, the, uh, def the different views we'd like to replace. So I'm going to replace the uh, main view in our parent template file. So in, a, in UI router, every state has a parent, so except the uh, root unnamed state. So a login state uh, doesn't have a defined parent and therefore it has the root unnamed state. And the root unnamed state associate, the template associated with the root unnamed state is the root unnamed template. And it's the index.html file where the first uh, UI view directive is uh, specified. And so when we specify uh, views, uh, JSON object here, we're saying we'd like to replace the main view in the parent template file, so the parent of the login state. So we're changing the parent of the login state uh, template file, and we're going to uh, specify a JSON object here, and I'm going to specify a template file here. And so I'm not going to specify any controller just yet. I'm going to say we're going to use the login template file here. So if uh, that uh, uh, so I'm getting a beep here saying that there's an error and uh, Okay, so I had to pause the video um, Because I Took a second for me to figure out what was going wrong But basically state provider we require a dot state function called here and um, uh, So we're calling the state function to define the login state so uh, basically um, our code should work now and if I go to our uh, web application here um, I can go to the login URL and it should display the uh, login form but uh, you may need to do a, a hard empty cache and hard reload because it may have cached a template file there and if I go to slash um, login you can see that we have a login form here now it's going to say uh, page title undefined because we didn't define the custom data that the root controller is looking for on a successful state change. So I'm just going to define that data real quick here. I'm going to define page, I'm going to define a, our custom data field here. I'm going to define a page title of uh, login. So we're basically on the login screen and so this should update now with that information. So you can see that the uh, title updated here to login so that's working properly and we don't have any errors and the next thing I want to show you guys is uh, the registration form so I'm going to use I'm going to chain the state method so I can call state again because state returns the state provider so I can call this multiple times and I'm going to create a register state and I'm just going to basically uh, mimic the login state that we've already created and just replace um, any occurrence of login with uh, register so all right, so now all we need to do is replace uh, every occurrence of login with register. So I'm just going to have register here, register here, and I'll, I'll maybe call the title registration instead. So that creates our register state here, and um, I need to, I'm getting an error here. So let's see what's wrong. Oh, okay, so we need to end this tag here. That's a problem. Okay, so um, uh, basically uh, our register state is uh, properly defined there. And so we should be able to go to register now and have our register form pop up. So uh, basically um, we have that working properly. And uh, now I'm going to go ahead and create, um, uh, show you guys a little bit about data binding and create the scope, uh, the scope service. So um, I'm going to create, I'm going to uh, add a controller to our login function. I'm going to call it login controller or CTRL. And I'm going to define the controller down here. I'm going to call it that controller. And I'm going to call the controller login CTRL and create a function. Now this function is an injectable, so we can inject different objects into it. So I'm going to inject the scope service into here so that we can access the scope of the view this is attached to. And I'm going to um, use this to define a register function here. I mean a login function. And this will illustrate a little bit about data binding. So 
I'm just going to print out the username and password that the user uh, has placed in the form for us. So I'm going to uh, alert user logged in with scope.account.name and uh, and scope.account.password. So by doing this, by printing this, I uh, need a plus here. Okay, All right. So by doing this, I'm getting another error here. Okay. Okay, so I need to end this. Uh, uh, oh, I have another uh, back there. Okay, that should fix it. Okay, so um, basically uh, what we're doing here is we're creating, uh, we're just going to alert the user that he logged in with a certain username and password. Now we're going to have to bind uh, this login uh, to um, our form the login function to so that when you, the user clicks the submit function this uh, uh, button this function gets executed and we're also going to bind to the scope ob object the account.name and account.password so I'm going to go to a login form now and I'm going to specify um, ng submit equals um, uh, login so I'm calling the login function here at, on the scope object uh, when a user clicks submit and that's what the ng submit directive does and now I can specify bind these two input fields to a model separately so I can bind this to the account.name uh, attribute and so this is creating a JSON object called account in our scope object so I'm going to call this account.password so by doing this um, it, we're going to be able to get the username and password of the user when he clicks a button so if I go over to here and I type Chris and password and I click register. Oh, I'm on the register button. Let me go to login. If I go to login, I type Chris and password, and I click login. You can see user logged in with Chris and password. So it's detecting the uh, the it's uh, detecting uh, binding the variable the uh, input the um, the data on the DOM to um, the scope object. So when the DOM changes, we also get notified in the scope of the change so the scope is consistent and that's what's important so uh, basically this is how we're binding data in our login template file and over here I'm going to specify an ng submit of, of uh, let's see register I'm going to call it the register function and I'll pretty much do the same thing I'll just have call this um, ng model equals account dot username dot name and ng model equals account.password and if I go to account.js and I, I can create another controller here and I'm going to create it and call it register controller and just change the name of the function and also say user registered with this data and then just go to the function up uh, go to uh, up go up here and specify a register controller Let me just make sure I call that. Uh, yeah, okay. All right, so these, this is the same name as this. So um, now our register form should be working. If I go to the register part of the page, and you can see if I type uh, Chris password, okay. So if I click user registered with Chris and uh, undefined password, so let's see. All right, so I misspelled model here. So all right, now it should work. If I type Chris, if I type Chris password, see it. Um, if I refresh this, I type Chris password. See now it's working probably. Okay, so data. So a uh, refresh doesn't always work in uh, the library load isn't working perfectly in this uh, project but um, helps now and then so uh, basically I'm going to um, uh, so this is kind of, so this is example of data binding and uh, basically uh, if I go to app.js file here you can see that um, what what the controller does is it binds a variable to the page it, it binds data to the page tile variable and scope object and then in index.html 
we render that text using ng-bind. So ng-bind is basically um, one way of uh, basically uh, if uh, the controller declares a variable, we can specify it in our view using ng-bind. And uh, so this is an example of uh, using UI router in your application. And I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful. If you did, like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you for watching.